Hey everyone and welcome back to this class, the NumPy stack in Python. In this lecture, we're going to look at how to do regression in code. The relevant file for this lecture, if you want to look at the pre-written version, is regressionexample.py in the course repo. As before, I want to remind you that I'm not going to be typing everything here character by character, since in this lecture what I have to say is more important. So I'm going to focus on explaining what I'm doing rather than just typing. However, you are encouraged to do the typing, since you are the one who has to learn this API. Don't equate my speed to your speed, and don't equate the speed of the video as the speed you should go when you're trying to understand this stuff. Pause, rewind, and make use of the tools available to you. Also, please remember that you can try this code out wherever you want. Whether you like Jupyter Notebook, or you like plain text editors, or you like command line editors like Vim, it does not matter. Remember, Python code is Python code, no matter the environment. Let's get started. So the first thing you need is to get the data for this code in order for it to run. We'll be using the Airfoil dataset, which you can download at the URL provided at the top of this code file. Some facts about the dataset if you're curious. First, if you don't know what an airfoil is, this is a picture of one. It's basically an airplane wing. So this dataset is all about taking certain attributes, such as the frequency and angle of attack, and trying to predict the sound pressure level, basically how loud it is. So if you go to the URL provided in the code file, you can read all about this. Next, I'm going to import NumPy in pandas. All right, and we're going to load this file in using read CSV since it has a tabular format. Now this brings up an important point which is where do we usually put our data? Since this repository is designed such that each folder corresponds to a different course, it makes sense to also have a folder for our data files. There are multiple reasons for this. First, we don't want to include data files in the repository itself. In the future, the data we work with is going to get very large, possibly up to tens of gigabytes. We certainly do not want to store that on GitHub. Secondly, it helps when multiple courses make use of the same dataset. This way, you only need to store one copy and have one reference to the file, no matter which course you are in. For example, the MNIST dataset is a very common benchmarking dataset used in machine learning. We are going to use this a lot, so it doesn't make sense to put it in any single folder, other than a more central folder, which is just meant for data. All right, so this folder is called large files, and it's always going to be assumed to be adjacent to the class folder. So that's why you see the dot dot. So that makes you come out of the NumPy class folder and then go into the large files folder. So this is where you should put the airfoil self noise.dat after downloading it. Next, let's look at this data frame to get a sense of what's inside it. So we can do dot head. That'll show us the first few rows and also the column names and also info. So we can see that all the columns are numbers. Now recall that as per the documentation, the first five columns are inputs and the final column is the output or target. So the next thing we can do is use our knowledge of pandas in order to get arrays that will represent our X and Y. These columns don't have names other than the default 0, 1, and 2, and so on. So we can use these integers as column names. So 0 to 4 represents x, and 5 represents y. So let's get the data and the targets. One important thing to note here is that I'm using the dot values attribute. This is different from what you saw earlier in this course. So as of 2018 or so, pandas changed their API so that they could phase out the asMatrix function. So if you try to use asMatrix now, 
it's going to give you a warning that it's going to be removed in a future version. So from now on, just use dot values instead. Next, we would like to do a train test split as we did before. So we import train test split and then we call it. All right, next, we're going to use linear regression to solve our problem. So let's import linear regression. And now notice how all these steps are the same as before. So we instantiate the object, we call fit. So let's do those two things first. All right, and now we can evaluate it. So our train score is 0.499 and our test score is 0.5467. Now remember, these don't represent accuracy since we're not doing classification. This number is the R square. So close to 1 is better, but 0.5 is actually not that bad, even though normally you might consider a classification rate of 0.5 as bad. What this means is the actual correlation is the square root of 0.5, which is a bit higher, something like 0.7. Finally, I want to point out that regression models also have a predict function. So if I have a new data tomorrow that I would like to make predictions for, well, this is how you would do it. You just call predict. So let's do that. And let's print out some predictions so we see what they look like. Okay, not very surprising. And finally, just like before, we might want to see what happens if we use a different model. So this time I choose random forest regressor. Notice how this seems very similar to what we used in the previous script, which was random forest classifier. This means that both of these models have the same underlying algorithm but one makes categorical predictions, whereas the other makes real value predictions. So if you're doing regression, your class name generally ends with regressor, whereas if you're doing classification, your class name generally ends with classifier. Now note that there are definitely some exceptions to this. All right, so this should be very easy. You should be very comfortable with this API by now. We import the model. We instantiate the model. We train the model. Okay, and then we evaluate the model. So the R squared is 0.98 for the train set. And the R squared is 0.91 for the test set. So it looks like we're doing pretty good.